Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. You're so good at this. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I am joined by my lovely roommate, Casey. And I think other than like my day in the life and like my vlogs, this is like the first like sit down video we've done together, which is kind of crazy to me considering it's what, like the end of October. We've lived together for two months and this is the first sit down video we've done together. So I've got a lot of comments from you guys asking about my application process to JMU and how I actually got in and like what my stats were and like all that kind of stuff. I thought about doing a sit down video with just like my kind of stats, but then I I thought that it'd be more beneficial if I had my roommate as well because obviously our stats aren't going to be exactly the same as each other's and mine and hers aren't going to be the same as yours probably. I thought it'd be beneficial for you guys to hear two stories about how we both got into JMU and while we're doing this I'm actually going to be doing her makeup because and I also do that on here. So if you guys are interested in this video just keep on watching. Okay, so I'm just gonna like braid her hair to get her hair out of her face real quick. Starting back in like high school, I'd say like junior year is where it starts to get kind of important about college and everything as I'm sure you guys are aware of. So for me, my high school unfortunately didn't really offer dual enrollment. So I took as many APs as I could, but at least the ones that I wanted to. So we had seven classes in high school and I'd say around three, my junior and my senior year, I took APs, which obviously you can take, you know, seven APs if you wanted to, but I was wasn't really that serious about it so I only took three APs but yeah you could take a lot more if you wanted to um I took like a couple honors and a couple college preps so like basically it went college prep honors and AP majorly I was in AP and honors classes and I did pretty well I think I got like all B's in my APs except for a push which like that's a different story but I'd say I think my overall high school GPA was a 3.9 I think I was really close to a 4 -0. that was weighted and my unweighted I think was a 3-7 I want to say but I don't really remember so that's how grading in high school kind of worked for me and then as for class rank I don't remember exactly how many kids we had we got ours like the end of like September of our senior year we got ours it kind of feels good Ooh. doesn't it it's like it's cold it's water it's really cold this is the bare minerals complexion rescue hydrating foundation stick so is that instead of liquid foundation yeah but it's like got water in it, which is why it feels cold. So for my class rank, I don't exactly remember how many kids were in high school because like I said, we got our rank so early on, but I remember I was 118 out of probably like 500, give or take. I think when I did the math, I was literally like the top 29% of my class. I was top, pretty much top 30. So I was like above average as far as like my class standing. That's where I stood as far as high school. You wanna tell them about your high school experience and your grades and everything? My freshman year, I did not do so hot. I got a C in earth science because my teacher was psycho. So that brought my GPA down a lot in the beginning. It's kind of hard to like raise your GPA up after freshman year. So freshman year was my bad year. Katie said junior year was her bad year, but my every, freshman year. Literally almost every person, if you ask them what was their worst year, they're gonna say junior year. Mine was freshman year. I also took geometry and so did that was I. Hard. I I sucked at geometry. I can't say <laughs> those words. I sucked at geometry. But anyways, then sophomore year was fine. Junior year was also fine. I started taking dual enrollment classes because my high school offered dual enrollment or AP and I always thought it was smarter to take dual enrollment just because if you get a C, you're automatically gonna get college credit, whereas AP you have to like take, a take test. the test and then get I don't know if it's like a three, four, or five, whatever gets you college. Credit. Yeah, so the AP scale is one to five, and JMU only takes fours or fives. Yeah, so I took, junior year, I took dual enrollment pre calc. I got a B, so technically on my report card, I got a B, but for my GPA, I technically got an A. Yeah, that's weighted. how APs are too. And then that was the only dual enrollment class in junior year. And then senior year, I took statistics, which was dual enrollment. I took dual enrollment government. And I took dual enrollment English, like a writing class. So I got college credit for all of those. And I think it averaged out to like, I think I came in with 20 college credits. So that's not bad. And, and I didn't come in with any, so you yeah. can do either. And I got out of a writing <laughs> class at JMU and a government like class. A yeah, so that actually helped a lot. None of my math actually transferred over to different math classes but I still got credit 
that makes any sense. Do you remember your rank at all? Yeah, I was like dead middle. I was pretty average student. That's how both my friends are. Rachel and Sarah, I hope yeah. you don't mind, but like my two best friends throughout high school, Rachel was 197 and Sarah was 199. So they had like one person yeah. in between each other. And we were friends with the other person. I don't remember who you were, but someone was 198. And I think that's really funny, but Sarah was like right at the cutoff of 50%. And I just thought that was really funny how close they were. I think my class had like in the 250 range for class size. Yeah, also her school, she's like from like the middle of nowhere. Sorry. Yeah, so her school's also really like smaller than ours, I guess. You just said your class size was 250 and I was 500. It was in the 250, so I was like whatever that middle is. My GPA, I think when I graduated was a 3.7. I think I was pretty average, maybe a little above average, but not like the smart. As far as applying to college, where did you apply to college? I applied to JMU Tech and Bradford. You applied to three? Yes. I applied to like eight or nine. I applied to a lot. Did you get into any of them? I got into Radford, but my sister went to Radford for two years and it's like super really close. close. Yeah. It's like, well, an hour. So I guess Tech's closer, but I just didn't really want to go there because I feel like it's like my sister's school, even though she doesn't go there anymore. It's still like her school and it's also kind of small i guess i kind of like a larger campus even though i don't like walking but virginia tech i applied early decision so that was like binding so if you got in that first round you like kind of had to go there or you had to pay like a really large sum of money to like get out of it and then they had early action it was still earlier than like normal application but like it wasn't binding i think i did that because i did the non-binding yeah one. and then they had like regular and i got waitlisted so so basically at that time I was like I'm going to JMU because damn you had to know by May 1st and the tech waitlist wouldn't tell you until like July, July I think. Come to find out they accepted like 4,000 more people so no one on the waitlist would have gotten in so like it's really good that I did not wait because I would have been collegeless and worked at a snow shack for the rest of my life. Yes so I went JMU very happy with my decision because it all worked out and my major here is great. So my story is a little bit different. I applied to think about eight schools and at the time I was applying to a different major than the one I'm in now. I applied for like architectural design and like interior design and like stuff like that. That is a little bit of like I think a narrower um, major than marketing. I applied to JMU, Virginia Tech, UVA, VCU, South Carolina, South Carolina, Clemson, Alabama. I think, I think that's it. Basically, long story short, I got in Alabama. Like obviously. Roll Tide. I got into Alabama. I got into JMU and I got into VCU. Katie Everyone also else, got waitlisted at Tech. Yeah, so I got waitlisted at you make this work. Oh. Tech Rejects. <laughs> I got waitlisted at Virginia Tech, South Carolina. Did so, you hear back from any of the people that you got waitlisted from, basically? So... Or was it like you had already declined the waitlist? I wanted to be on the waitlist for South Carolina and then Tech, I was like not put on the waitlist because I didn't want to wait till July, like yeah, she was saying. that was crazy. I don't know who would have waited. Yeah, so I... JMU was my number one anyway, so like I knew like if I got deferred or like on waitlisted for somewhere else I wasn't gonna do that unless I didn't get into JMU so it all worked out in the end but like Casey I applied early I and think I think other people found out in April yeah March or April something like that but I remember I found out and I got accepted and for me getting to JMU was a really big accomplishment because like I said my major was architectural design so in order to be accepted you had to send in an art portfolio so I had to send in like all these like obviously like drawings and paintings and all the stuff that I had done. That was a really big deal for me because like obviously they saw my art and they're like oh my god we need her. So like that was like a proud moment for me but obviously when I got here I switched. But as far as like the application process. Also if you look at the stats online though Jamie was actually harder to get into than Ted. Just throwing that out there. Okay so let's talk about SATs and like test scores for JMU. JMU actually is one of the few schools that doesn't require you to send SATs. And I remember because I took my SAT junior year, I don't know how it works for all schools, but I know at my school we were required to take the PSAT my sophomore year. You had and to take the PSAT? Yeah, it was required for all sophomores. 
I took it, but it wasn't required. Yeah, so I took the PSAT and I got a 1080 on it, which like for not, you know, studying, I thought was pretty good. Later on, I, during junior year, I took the SAT for real and I got an 1180. So like I studied for it as much as you can study for like a SAT, I guess, you know, like I looked at all the math and like all that kind of stuff. My dad was like, you know, we probably should strive for like a 1200 to a 1250 just to like be safe because That's I thought- score. 16. Oh, crap. We were like, let's strive for like a 1200, 1250 because that's kind of like a safe range for us to be in. I took it again. I got an 1180. So I'm like, all right, this must be my number. Then I was like, you know, like I got an 1180. Let's try the ACT because everyone's like, oh, it's so much easier, blah, 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 blah. And I took the ACT and I do not agree with that statement at all. I think that's like such well because the act has science on it right yeah so the act has science but like not like science facts you had to like read stuff like i don't even remember but like it was rough i hated taking tests like it was the worst but come to find out i get my act score back and i got a 22 i'm like oh that's great like you know maybe that'll translate to something better than a 1180 so i looked it up a 22 equals an 1180 so i said i'm done that's that's it. I'm not taking this again. I'm not spending all that money to get the same score. When I was applying to college, I don't remember if I sent it to Jamie or not because I know that it like wasn't required. I might have just for like, I guess I took it three times. I should send it just in case. But obviously I'm here. So an 1180 wasn't too bad of a score and not <laughs> get me into college. Well, I don't think it could hurt you. It could only help you by sending it in. What did you get on your SAT? I got an 1140. I also took it three times. I did not take the ACT. 11. 40 was my super score so I got like different things on the math and reading every time but it's like averaged out got the same thing to the super time. score one thing that I want to add though is what I figured out during my like application process was like yes your grades are important and like yes your SAT score is like important I don't think it's as important as everyone says it is in my opinion do you agree with that yeah I would say that people try to put a lot of pressure yeah. on you and that like schools only care about like grades and stuff like that my friends were always doing like extracurriculars and stuff they're like if i don't do you know 10 extracurriculars i'm not going to get into college which i i honestly didn't really do any extracurriculars i as we all know i didn't enjoy high school so just being there and doing like extra stuff just like i don't know i didn't like it um i think on my application i talked about my job a lot because that's what i spent my high school years doing is working and like I feel like that shows like a lot of leadership and like trustworthiness and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I think teachers really preach like grades, grades, grades and all that stuff. And like, yes, that's true. But I also think that there's like too much pressure. Yeah. yeah. And like too much going into that because I had like A's and B's. So I was a pretty good student. I had a job. I say I played sports. I played travel and school sports. I was in clubs at school. But the one thing I didn't do was community service outside of like school. And I, I think, did. yeah, I did not. So I think that is actually one of the biggest things that hurt me because that was definitely a big thing for tech. But I think it's also depending on what school you go to. Like JMU wasn't as much into community service, which I think helped me because I really did not do community service. So depending on what school you want to go to, you should look at like, like their mission book. and kind of like stuff because like community service could really help you probably. So I did community service this summer going into my senior year and I actually really enjoyed it. I worked at a hospital which I think is really fun. I really enjoyed the like environment and like the people that I worked with. And we basically like answered phone calls and delivered stuff to patients' rooms and like stuff like that. And it made me like kind of want to go and like be there and participate because like you hear community service and like, at least for me, I think like, oh, picking up trash or like volunteering at a, like a homeless shelter, which are like obviously great options. But if that's not your thing, like I would definitely recommend looking into like your options and what community service options are available to you because that's something I really enjoyed and wish I would have started earlier. Yeah, I would say the one thing that I was kind of nervous for when applying was that extracurricular piece. And I feel like that didn't really hurt me too much. Yeah, I got on the wait list for a lot, but at the end of the day, I'm where I wanted to be. And I don't think it really mattered a lot in that sort of sense. I feel like it's a little silly. I had the grades and like I had a job and I played sports. So I feel like I did do extracurricular. Like, yes, I didn't volunteer, but like, I didn't really have a lot But I feel of time. like you were involved, like. Like I was involved, so I think that is what hurt me with tech 
for the most part but i think that that was kind of dumb because i had better grades than a lot of people so would you say from your experience and like i don't think either of us did this but do you think applying to a certain major helps you or hurts you like do you think it's better to apply to like your certain school or do you think it's better to apply as like undeclared i think you should if you like know what you want to do you should apply to the major i'm letting her do her own mascara because that's really hard for me to do other people's mascara is there anything else you think we're forgetting about the application process in jamie don't get stressed out yeah i got like really stressed out you should not procrastinate them because they do take a good amount of time but like that's why i did early action early decision for a lot of them just because i didn't want the stress of like like i wanted to be done with applications by christmas yeah like that was like my i was done by like october and november i think i was done by thanksgiving but i gave myself to like december that's how i felt i didn't want to stress about it so at the end of the day you're going to get into college hopefully <laughs> hopefully but at the end of the day you have to think like you're gonna get into college and if not you also have the community college route mm -hmm. so at least for virginia so my boyfriend does this he goes to community college and he's in his second year so he's gonna start applying pretty soon to different colleges and how virginia community college system works is that he has guaranteed admission into like any school like he still has to do like the application but he pretty much has like guaranteed admission into school if you don't get in the first time it's not going to be detrimental it's not going to be like the end of the world you also have the opportunity to transfer so if you you know get into one school but you really want to go to another school go to the school for a year do community college for a year and then you know you can always transfer so you do have options so if you don't get into like your first choice it's gonna be okay do you have any other advice yeah don't be sad because I was sad you were for a sad. long time and like it, everything worked out and I have Katie as my roommate. I know. Do you regret coming to JMU? No. Roll Dukes. I was never the type of person so like Casey I think there's a lot of people with like families who have like baby pictures of them at like all you know Virginia Tech games or UVA games stuff like that like that's their school. I never had that but with my parents went to VCU and like that's like probably like 10 to 15 minutes away from me so it was kind of like the same thing with Radford I feel like with you. We were a huge Tech fans it was just like like, that's like the closest school by us so like, yeah see I never had that. I was like engulfed into it I guess but anyway I knew as soon as like I took my tours at JMU and I knew and I say this all the time but definitely when I got the acceptance letter it like came to tour and like visited and all that kind of stuff that's when I kind of knew like all right this is home like this is it you're gonna have that feeling it'll be okay just try to you know don't stress Luca I'm talking to you take a breath it's okay and everything will work itself out all right guys I hope you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed Casey being here and comment if you want to see more of me yeah yeah, comment down below if you want to see more of her in my videos this video is a little different not really what i normally do but if you enjoyed it make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave do you have anything else you want to say roll dukes roll dukes we're always we're biased we're always gonna <laughs> say we're always biased we're always gonna say come to jamie but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in my next one ciao i'm taking italian bye guys